It's no secret that real estate is one of the best investment vehicles out there. But with all the current uncertainty, how do we know when and where to put our hard-earned money to work for us? It's easy to become distracted by that shiny object or the quote-unquote next best thing. So how do we determine which strategies will best align with our financial goals? Whether you're an active real estate entrepreneur, a passive investor, or looking to get into real estate investing, our goal is to provide investors with the insights and strategies to build our portfolios all while protecting our capital. I'm Danny Nichols. And I'm Chris Thompson. This is the Two Smart Assets Real Estate Investing Podcast. Listen, if you're interested in passive real estate investing, but aren't sure how or where to get started, our passive investing guide walks you through the entire process from understanding the benefits to performing the due diligence. Download your copy today at twosmartassets.com and start taking action. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Two Smart Assets Real Estate Investing Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Nichols, and today our guest is Eric Martell. Eric purchased his first apartment building at just 18 years of age while still at university. After graduation and his position as an actuary, he was dismayed to see hundreds of company pension plans being rolled over into 401ks, shifting the retirement risk to employees. This made him reconsider traditional beliefs about saving for retirement. And also, after the dot-com crash of 2001, Eric started looking for ways to earn passive income and founded Martell Turnkey with his family. Eric now shares what he has learned so you too can stop trading your time for money. Eric, it's great to see you, sir. Welcome to the show. Well, Danny, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Oh, you I'm, did a great job on the introduction. I must say <laughs> you're the best. <laughs> well, I mean, you wrote it, so I got to give you all the credit. You know, so no, it's beautiful. I absolutely love it, you know. And, uh, you know, I kind of want to go back to your introduction there, actually. You know, yep. you were involved in real estate at a young age. And, you know, that's 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 amazing. It's a great time to start, right? So let's start with that. How did you get into real estate at 18? And then how were you able to take down an apartment building at that age? Yeah, so I think at the at the beginning, I mean, I, I came from a regular family. My parents were nine to five workers and stuff like that, and really kind of like stuck stuck in that mode and not knowing how to get out and not really having the the will to get out of it or just right. kind of like you know really be stuck in that in that rut. And I knew at a very early age that I, I, that's not the life that I wanted. I didn't know exactly what that would look like, but I knew that there was something out there uh, for me. And basically at university, I met through some friends, I met a uh, person that was a real estate investor and he was very successful and he was just a regular community college teacher. And I was like, this guy, this guy is just like my parents. He's not making any more money than my parents and he's not any smarter and he's not, you know, there's nothing special. He didn't inherit his money. And now he has a 36 unit apartment building. He's planning to build a shopping mall. He has like a nursing home. And it's just like, wow. like, how does this guy, how is this guy able to do that? Right. And I'm hoping, I hope he's not listening to that because he's going to be <laughs> insulted. The thing he's not, nothing special. He's not that smart. <laughs> but really, I mean, this is how it was. And this is where I knew that because this, there's something to it. I need to learn from him. And he agreed to be my mentor. And he showed me what he knew about about real estate, and uh, and this is why we looked at that uh, at apartment buildings. Uh, that's what he knew, and he said this is a great place to get started. And and of course, I had no money, but after like looking at lots and lots, of hundreds of multifamilies, small multifamily property properties, I was able to find one property where the, the seller was willing to give uh, a second uh, mortgage, a second lien on the property. And the credit union that lent me the money allowed allowed that to happen as well. So it was, um, you know, but it took a while. I mean, I had to, I had to look at hundreds of properties. I had to convince and pull my realtor along saying yeah it's possible <laughs> and I wouldn't have been able to do that without my mentor my mentor really kept telling me that no no this is you're on the right road keep going keep going you and said but my realtor is telling me that I can't it doesn't <laughs> exist he said don't listen to him keep going keep going so uh and that's that's how I manage it without the mentor I would have given up most likely I would have trusted obviously the advice of of an experienced realtor to tell me that you know this what I'm looking for doesn't exist, but it did. No money down and cash flowing at the end of it. So that was amazing. 
That that is amazing, you know, and I think that just speaks to the power of you know having a great mentor, right? Whether you know whether yeah. you're at a young age or you know you're starting at an older age. So I want to touch on that for a sec. You know, tell us a little bit. You know, obviously it's very important your journey, right, of having this mentor, getting started in yeah. real estate. Uh, but for somebody else who's getting started, can you talk a little bit about some of the things that maybe they can do or they should focus on when trying to find a mentor? So when tr- I mean, you have to find someone someone that's close to you that you can trust. I mean, this is this is ideal. Uh, I mean, I know there's a lot of other people out there. I mean, even for me, like I do mentorship as well. But ideally, I mean, I recommend people to find someone that is close to them that can be uh, that they trust and all of that instead of buying and hiring some some outside person. That is ideal. Of course, if you're stuck, you don't know anybody then you can find mentors that have helped other people, but then go through some, uh, get some referrals, ask them to talk to some people that they've helped in the past or see their track records and then kind of like, uh, you know, then hire them to to be your mentor or something like that. But there's a lot of things. Also, when I got started, I mean, there was no information out there. I mean, it was, there was no YouTube, there was no, None of that. So, I mean, the MLS listing was a bunch of binders. That's what I had to go through. A bunch of binders one by one and doing my, you know, there was no filter on the binder. I had to actually (laughs) go through it, turn every page, you know, so, um, and do some calculation to decide which one I wanted to, uh, to investigate a little bit more. So now we have, there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of books. Obviously, I don't want to plug my book, but my book is there as well. So, and it's uh, it's a how-to guide on achieving financial freedom and leaving a legacy for your your children. I'm I'm providing all the information that someone needs to to get there uh, on their own. And it's called Stop Trading Your Time for Money. But that's not the plug. <laughs> but yeah, for mentor, yeah, that's, that's right. So find someone that's local. That's what really helped me because I knew that I knew this man and uh, he was willing to help me. It didn't cost me a penny. There's tons of people that invest in real estate that, that can help you. Real estate investors are is a great community. They're, they're great people. They're always willing to help uh, other people so that's um, that's very good go to meetups find people in there that uh, that um, you know that have invested in something that you're interested in as well and you know try to hook up get them for go uh, go and get coffee with them and uh, lunch and stuff like that and, absolutely yeah. absolutely i think those are great tips there eric and i uh, you know i definitely want to get back to your book so we'll make sure to circle back that oh yeah back to that back to that <laughs> later because it's going to be an amazing resource for our listeners i know they're going to love that uh but you know i do want to jump back into something we talked about in your bio and those are some eye-opening events you know throughout your career including you know your change in thinking about retirement and also you know the dot-com crash of 2001 can you tell us a little bit more about those events and, how, and the significance they had on you and how they kind of shaped uh, the investor you are today yeah, so I was after graduating. So I bought my apartment building when I was still at university. After that, I graduated as an act, uh, as an actuary and started working in uh, in pension. And basically, at that time, my day to day job was basically converting corporate pension plan into retirement savings plans. Basically, converting these uh, defined benefit plan into four hundred one ks. So. And that's that sounds like oh yeah oh that's no big deal but that's really shifting the the uh, the risk from the employer to the employee mm-hmm. the employer had they were uh, they were hiring the best investment advice they could in order to make sure that at retirement you would get two percent or fifty percent of your uh, of your final salary or sixty percent of your final salary and they would guarantee that you would have that that was the plan. Um, but instead, they, what they did, they shifted it towards a saving plan. And they're going to say, well, I'm going to give you some money. You're going to put money in. I'm going to put as much money in. And then at the end, well, see what you can get. Right. And right. that's kind of how it was. That's what the 401k is and the other retirement accounts. So you have you as a as an individual, as a worker, you have to figure out how much money do I need to save? I need to figure out also kind of like where, where do I invest that money and to make the, the to have the right goals and reach my goal. And then I have to figure out how is that money at the end going to be converted into a stream of income every month so that I can pay my bills. Having $500,000 in a bank, that doesn't help me 
uh, you know, pay my bills and how long can I pay my bills and all that kind of stuff. And also how to extract that money from your 401k and by minimizing taxes. All of that is, uh, it's, so that's, that's what I was working in at that time in, in pension. And uh, I, it was horrible. Like every day, that's what I was doing day in, day out, just like winding down these pension plan. And, you know, we knew what we were doing. I was, first of all, putting myself out of a job because you don't need a, an actuary for a defined contribution plan. But also I was, you know, basically not destroying, <laughs> destroying pension for a lot of people. So, so yeah, that's, that's crazy. And, you know, obviously how long did you do that for? How long were you in that job as an actuary for that? Uh, six years, six years. Okay. So take yeah. us, take us through. So you went through that. You've obviously determined like, you know, this is not something that you're agreeing with uh, what happened after that. And then take us all the way through the dot com crash. Well, it was very depressing. And then technology was uh, kind of like becoming more, uh, there was more and more stuff about technology. And so I, I was really interested in that. I actually built a lot of, uh, computer systems and programs for actuaries. And then, then eventually I moved on and I did, I did my own consulting company. We did some, uh, all kinds of different, uh, projects and stuff. And eventually I joined a big company, a big startup, uh, from California and got lots of stock options, moved to California to their headquarters in, uh, in, in California near San Francisco Bay area. And I had tons of stock options, 2000, June 2000, that's when we moved here. And 2001, the dot-com crash. Uh, I had taken out some money uh, and to diversify in something else outside the stock option, but I diversified in the same asset class. I diversified in the stock market. Mm. So when the whole stock market crashed, it doesn't matter how diversified you are in the stock. You are in the stock market. It you're crashing, so that's what happened. So, so, so that, uh, go ahead. Uh, so, so that really shaped uh, your transition into real estate. Is that, is that how that happened? Oh yeah, I mean that's really a shock because oh, you're absolutely. kind of like you thought I, my uh, my financial advisor salesperson uh, told me that said uh, you may. You made it like you, you you made it just take all your money out and that's it you just you're done and then uh three months later i was <laughs> there was no way i would be able to retire i lost i lost pretty much everything at that point wow. and uh and then i just like okay, you know what do i do this was really the shock that says okay well i need to i need to do something else here i need to be in control of my investment and having uh, owning shares in the stock market, you're not in control of your investment. I wanted to be in control of the business, being able to know what's going on with the business. And if I fail, then at least it's my fault. You know, I don't have stock market. I don't have the Fed. I don't have, you know, government and, you know, other investors and all of that to blame. That's just myself. So, um, so that's, so then I said, the other thing too, I wanted, I wanted to have something that was passive income. I wanted to have, you know, that so that I didn't have to work. I didn't enjoy working that much. Uh, <laughs> nobody should really. Absolutely. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I wanted to travel, blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, well, I, that's what I need. And I need to have something that I can pass on to my children. And, and that's kind of how we, we got started. But we did, we did my wife and I uh, did a lot of, uh, lot of different businesses. Uh, we did like a local grocery store. We did um, a gourmet sauce company. We, uh, we, wow. did all, we did all kinds of different things. With the goal was always to get it started and package it in such a way that it would be passive income that we can run it from anywhere in the world that we could, you know, and we could travel and, and do all that. Yeah, that's amazing. I love to hear that. And so with, with, you know, with your experience, you know, as an actuary and just coming through all this stuff and then the real estate investing you've done and also these extra businesses that you, you built and operated, uh, talk to us about how that really helped you with, you know, create and manage the companies you have today, the Martell turnkey and the Martell invest that what are some of the things that really you took away from those experiences to get into those companies? So I think what's important, I think is to really uh, being able to organize, organize your business. I think this is something that's, uh, that's critical. So once you get the business, you have to kind of like, you know, set the goal, look at the numbers, look at the financials, and and look at your resources you know how much time do i want to invest in that how much money do i have do i have the skills if i don't have the skills where do i get the skills 
to, um, to do this. I want to be able to scale at one point. So how do I make sure that I organize everything or I have a way to scale this up to a certain size so that I can achieve financial freedom? I mean, that's, that's the goal, right? So, so that's, that's what it really, these experiences really helped me do that, really try to kind of like organize the business in that, in that fashion so that I can get out of it and then let it manage itself. Yeah. Um, so we did that, you know, for the, uh, the SaaS company, for example, I mean, and also, I mean, I didn't know anything about SaaS company uh, and, uh, but you know, we, you learn, you figure out, but you always figure out the numbers and the organization and the, and kind of like, like I said, like all the resources and all of that so that you can drive, you can drive in the right direction. Otherwise you just don't get in at all. You just say, well, this doesn't make sense. And then move on to the next opportunity. Yep, absolutely. Numbers are very critical when it comes to these things. They got to make sense. And I, I love your points about, you know, being able to transfer some of these skills into what you're doing now. And I think a, a lot of people who are maybe they're doing a side hustle, but even if they're working a W-2 job, you really you should be able to transfer some of your skills, even from a W job into, you know, your real estate investing or whatever business you're starting. There, there are things there. You just got to recognize them and put them into place. Right. So I think that's, yeah. that's, a, that's amazing that you bring that up. Um, so I do want to transition a little bit here, Eric. Uh, you know, we know you have a book out, Stop Trading Your Time for Money. Love that title. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, you're all in on financial freedom. Um, and I know there's a lot of people out there who, who are kind of on that path as well. They're looking to achieve financial freedom. It's very important to them, but they're running into hurdles, right? For, for mm -hmm. one reason or another. So what are some of the biggest challenges that you see people facing when trying to achieve financial independence or, or maybe even just start a business? Yeah. So I think there are a couple of things. I, I, mindset, obviously, I think is, is, uh, is very important because you uh, people have the wrong ideas about things. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, and uh, I, 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 there are a lot of people that talk about mindset. So I don't I don't really want to spend too much too much time here. But the other thing, too, is that, you know, setting setting a goal that is based on cash flow. I mean, a lot of the goals that we're seeing are accumulation kind of goal. And this is what Wall Street is telling us. Oh, in order to retire securely, you need to save $1 million or $1.5 or $750,000. And then you'll be able to retire securely. These are accumulation kind of things. And these goals are kind of like, they, are, they look unattainable. And then they also are not really uh, motivating. Um, so my recommendation is to have a cash flow, a monthly cash flow target, and then you work towards that. So that every investment that you make is actually going to add a layer and get you closer. And you can feel that you're going to get closer to your goal. So that's, yeah. that's one thing. Uh, the other thing too that I have is, uh, is alignment. People uh, tend to, uh, so they have their goal of achieving financial freedom, and they look at all kinds of different strategies for achieving that. There are multiple ways of, of doing that, uh, but then they don't consider uh, their, their resources. So they don't consider, for example, how much time they can, they can invest in this, how much money they can invest in this. Is this something that uh, they need to be, is it a location-based kind of uh, a business or investment that you have to be very close to it in order to to be successful or can it be done remotely all that kind of stuff so you really have to look at these resources and then pick uh, your your strategy so that it's all aligned with your goal so that's why i have in my book i have like the strategy alignment triangle that basically is a tool to help you kind of align kind of your market market criteria your investment criteria your resources and your strategy so that you're going to achieve your goal so many people so many investors are going from you know one shiny object to the next because they see oh i can make more more money here i can make more money there and it's just like yeah but you have to work at it you basically this is another job that or you don't have time for that or you need more money than you have in order to do this so you know so that's that's why it's very important for uh for people to be aligned in order to be successful. Yeah, I love those tips. Those those are great reasons to, you know, you know, if you're, you know, 
facing challenges. These are absolutely actionable steps that you can take. And, you know, I think a lot of people hear the terms, you know, financial freedom or financial independence, and it seems it's just a great idea, right? They love it. They fall in love with this idea, but then that's as far as it goes, right? It's kind of just, that's as far as it goes, or, you know, or maybe, or they have, uh, you know, all their financial ducks in a row, they're investing, but they're having trouble scaling. Just, there's just a number of things that could happen. I think I was reading an article last uh, week that mentioned uh, the majority of American individuals own one or two rental units at most, right? And, Mm -hmm. You know, for, yeah. for most for most people, that's not financial freedom. I mean, I know I have I've had when I started, I had a few rental properties. I wasn't financially free with those, you know, two or three properties. It just wasn't the case. And so yeah. I think a lot of people they get this idea and they might make a few moves, but they need those actionable steps to get you know past that plateau. So I love hearing you say that, and I really appreciate that. And I know that's going to be some stuff in your book that we're going to get onto later. So uh, that's going to mm-hmm. be an awesome resource. So you know, with that being said. You brought this up. There's a lot of shiny objects out there, right? There's a ton of stuff to yeah. be looking at. Uh, a lot of investment vehicles out there. In your opinion, what is the best investment vehicle for achieving financial freedom? Just your opinion. Well, I think for people that have W-2 uh, that are working full time, so you want to have uh, a strategy that is going to require very little time on your part. Something that's going to, and then you have to look at how much money you have. Uh, to invest. So typically, people don't have too much money. But if, if you do, then you can look at uh, a little bit bigger. But if you don't have too much money, and you don't have too much time, you're very limited. In my book, again, I have like the investment quadrant. Uh, and mm-hmm. then basically, on one axis is the time and on the other axis is kind of like the risk and the amount of money that you have, you have to invest. And you basically have to kind of stay in the lower lower left hand quadrant, which includes doing PML private money lending, doing, uh, you know, uh, house hacking, doing turnkey rentals, and, uh, and and the like. So these these kind of these are the ideal uh, investment, because they don't take much of your time. Uh, and they are going to produce passive income. And um, yeah, and then you, you don't need that much money. You can go a little bit higher if you have more money, then you can go maybe to multifamily, like a turnkey multifamily apartment building or other rentals, Um, you know, maybe mobile home park. If you have more time to devote to things, you can do burr strategy if you have more time and you want to handle contractors. But at the beginning, if you have a W-2 income and if you have uh, you don't have too much money, I would I would stick with single family turnkey rentals is the ideal uh, vehicle until you get to you know 60 70 80 percent of your uh, of your expenses are paid by your passive income once you get to that point then you can look at you can start exploring other other investments because now you're going to have more time then maybe you can go and look at a burst strategy because you know you can basically take some time off from work and then handle the contractor and you're going to make, yeah, you're going to make better returns, but you're going to spend more time towards it. So that's where the turnkey is better right now. Those are, those are great points. I'd love to hear that. And I definitely want to to jump into turnkey because that's something we don't really talk about much on the, on the show. So just before we get out of here and before we jump into the final round, tell us a little bit more about turnkey, what that is and what your company provides Martel turnkey. Yeah, so what our company does, we basically buy distressed property, uh, we renovate them for a tenant, we rent it out, and then we sell them to investors who want to achieve financial freedom. So when we close on the property, when you actually are the owner of the property, we introduce you to the property manager, you have you have the lender that we introduce you to, the insurance company, you have a tenant in place at the, at the same rent that we said or higher uh, than we said. Uh, and I'm laughing because we had one, one tenant recently that uh, we thought we would be able to rent the apartment, the house for 950 and we were able to rent it for 1200 So Wow, that's <laughs> so awesome. That's, that's something that happened this week. But um, yeah, so really this is the, um, you know, this is what happened. I mean, we really want to turn key. Our salespeople are really helping you go, you know, through the whole process, handholding you uh, through the whole process, and then making sure that it's as smooth as possible. Because we recognize that you don't have you don't have the time to do that. So we'll help you do that. Yeah, I love to hear that. You know, a lot of our listeners are passive investors as well. You know, in that and. 
I think this falls in line with a lot of them and their lifestyles, right? Because if they're de- busy W two employees, they're not going to have time to go out and do all this stuff and hire, you know, build a team and and hire the right people. Because we know we all know how important it is to have the right people in the right roles, right? I mean, and mm-hmm. you guys you guys already take care of this, so I think that's I think that's amazing, Eric. I love hearing that, and that strategy sounds amazing. You know, it, and this has been a great conversation. So I want to talk talk more about, you know, kind of what you're providing. So we want to shine a spotlight on you. So tell us more about, you know, Martel Turnkey, Martel Invest, what you guys are doing there. And then also let's get into your book. Yeah. So, I mean, the uh, Martel Turnkey, as I said, is a turnkey rental property. property. So we have investment in Memphis, uh, Cleveland, St. Louis, and Detroit. We also have some other markets that we're exploring right now. But the idea is that it's a turnkey rental. So you're buying a, a residential rental property that is cash flowing. So we're the expert. We know which market, which neighborhoods are going to cash flow in these cities. We have experienced uh, professional property management in place. And we, we really introduce you to everybody on the team to make it extremely easy for you to acquire property and it's cash flowing uh, typically around $250 to $300 a month uh, with a twenty dollars to $30,000 in down payment, giving you about like a 10 to 12% cash on cash return annualized. So pretty big, pretty good investment, I would say. Uh, and uh, also very... Um, you know, very easy to, 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 to do. You can keep your job and just keep accumulating these properties. Um, so that's, that's one thing. The, the Martel invest is something that uh, every once in a while we have some, uh, I can't really advertise that, but we're working right now on a fund. Um, so pretty, maybe by the time this uh, podcast air, we're going to have the, uh, so check out Martel invest or Martel turnkey website, and we're going to start advertising our, our fund, uh, to invest basically in, uh, it's going to be a fixed return, and then you'll be able to invest with us on uh, on single family rentals. Uh, the other thing too, and my book, obviously, my book is meant kind of as a, is a how to guide on achieving financial freedom. Um, so I talk about the mindsets. I talk about the goals, setting the right goal. I talk about look. I look at all the different strategies, and which one is best for you. And then I also look at the uh, how do you measure performance, how do you organize and scale, and uh, and then really walk you through the whole process for uh, at least doing doing your first uh, property and maybe using it for more than one property. Yeah, that's amazing. So where can if our listeners want to go get that book, where is the best place for them to go grab that? The best place is Amazon. So it's on Amazon. Okay. So stop trading your time for money for, by Eric Martel. Uh, if you can't find it for some reason, you can always go on my personal website, which is martelleric.com. Uh, and then in there, you can see my podcasts and my uh, all, all my links, social links and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. Awesome. We're going to make sure to put all that stuff in the show notes, Eric. So our listeners go grab that. Uh, just a, one more thing before we get out of here. I want to tell our listeners, if you're not following Eric on social media, go do so right now. You're putting out some great stuff, Eric. Uh, love seeing that value out there. So if any, if you're not following yet, go do it right now, right after this episode. So um, Eric, you know, this has been a great conversation, man. Really appreciate you coming on the show today. Well, thank you, Danny. The pleasure. Hey, thanks for listening to today's episode. Head over to iTunes to subscribe to the show. And while you're there, we'd really appreciate you leaving a rating and written review. If you have any questions or topics you'd like to hear on the show, connect with us on social media or through our website at twosmartassets.com. We look forward to speaking to each and every one of you. Talk to you soon.